Today, we'll use FM synthesis to design drum sounds that incorporate some of that acoustic feel of real instruments. We'll attempt to create the kick, snare, and hi-hat sounds all in a single FM patch. Let's get started. We'll use layer one to create the kick drum. And as usual, we'll start fresh by pressing the trash can icon. Next, we'll select operator eight and leave the default sine wave loaded. For the ratio, we'll lower it to 0.0. .0. Instead, we'll adjust the frequency offset to 41 Hertz to emulate the lower frequency range of the kick drum. To give definition to the initial attack, we'll use the pitch envelope assigned to the frequency offset. We'll set a short decay on its amplitude envelope to create that percussive sound. Let's play, and I'll adjust the parameters until I find values I like. That subtle pitch sweep at the beginning creates the click that'll help the kick drum sit better in the mix. But a good kick drum needs texture. So let's add a noise module to see if we can get a tone that resembles a real kick drum. I'm going to set the output to negative 20 decibels, which I'll adjust later if needed. We select the module and set the brush rate to around 5,300 to get a dense and rich white noise. To shape the tone of this noise, I'm gonna use a bandpass 24 filter. Let's set the cutoff at 66 Hertz. We'll copy and use the level envelope from operator eight so they have cohesion. While playing, we will adjust the resonance to very high values, but it is best to play and try. Perfect. To make the attack of the noise more dynamic, I'm going to use the pitch envelope to create a slight downward frequency sweep. This will make it less static and more percussive. I'm going to set the decay to around 100 milliseconds and raise the depth to around 30%. Let's play and adjust if necessary. All right, let's continue. We'll go to the effects section and load a clip type distortion. Apply a small amount, around 6%, to give it a bit of warmth and presence without oversaturating the sound. We'll now use some reverb to give it a little space. I'll leave the size at around 80 and set a three second decay so that the tail resonates a bit. The mix will be very low. Let's try around 1.5. Finally, I'm gonna use the equalizer to remove the low mids and strongly boost the highs, which are currently very dull. I think it now has some of that realistic timbre, so let's move on. Finally, to make the kick drum sound only on one key, we'll need to go to Layer and configure its key range to C2. Time to move on to the snare drum. For this, we'll select Layer 2 and use Operator 8. Here, I'm going to select a triangular waveform as it adds more odd harmonics than the sine wave. We'll lower the ratio to zero, and I'll set the frequency offset to around 156 hertz focusing on the mid-low frequencies. I want to achieve that inharmonic body of a snare drum, so I'll use the pitch envelope to create that transient of the hit with a very fast amplitude envelope. Let's play and adjust as we go. Okay, the basic hit is already there. Now let's work with the noise module. We'll add some direct output and configure it. I'm going to use a bandpass filter of 12 
and set the cutoff to around 200 Hz and the resonance to around 30%. We'll then add a modulation to the pitch to create a dynamic feel to the noise. We'll adjust the envelope to give us a natural fall. Let's now go to the FX. We'll again load a clip type distortion with the drive set at around seven, a bit more than on the kick drum. Here I need aggression like a real snare. Let's again create some space with the reverb. I'll play while adjusting the parameters to see if we can dial it in just right. Perfect. Lastly, like with the kick drum, we'll adjust the key range of the snare. Once set, let's see how it sits with the kick drum. Finally, let's configure that hi-hat. We'll use layer three, we'll mute operator eight and add some direct output to the noise module. We'll load a high pass 12 filter and set the cutoff at around 190 Hertz. The low resonance should be around 13. This way, we eliminate the low frequencies, focusing just on the high frequencies that provide its characteristic brightness. The subtle resonance adds a slight body without making it tonal. We'll adjust the level envelope with a very short decay of around 99 milliseconds without sustain, crucial for the percussive and short nature of a hi-hat hit. Great. Let's bring the effects panel into view. We'll try a delay synchronized to 1 8 with a mix at around 20%. This creates subtle rhythmic repetitions that follow the tempo, adding movement and groove without overpowering the main hi-hat sound. Let's adjust that key range again and adjust the volume levels if needed. And there you have it. I hope exploring these techniques will inspire your own percussive creations. See you in the next video.